Happy New Year! <laughs> Welcome to the Real Estate Fairies channel, where we're going to talk all things real estate. And then some. <laughs> <laughs> we want to kick this new year off talking about your real estate goals. Maybe your goal this year is to sell your house. Maybe you want to upsize or downsize. We're going to talk about selling your house for the most money in episode two. And if your goal is to rent, we're going to talk about that in episode three. We're going to talk about renting and lease to own programs. And if your goal is to buy this year, well, then you're going to want to stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today. So if your goal this year is to buy, you're going to want to make sure your finances are in order. I know some of you are thinking, well, I only have $5,000 saved up and I'm light years away from buying a house. But actually, if you talk to a lender, which we highly recommend you do, you might be pleasantly surprised and find out that you can buy a home this year or maybe the next year because there are many low down payment programs. But in the meantime, there are some things you can do on your own to get your finances in order. For example, number one. Number one, build credit. Yeah, so increasing your credit score will help you qualify for a better interest rate when you go to get pre-approved for a loan. Which gives you more buying power. Yes. Definitely a plus. <laughs> Big fans so of buying power. How can we build credit, guys? Let's start with something simple. Pay your bills on time. And in full. Another idea is you can get a secured credit card. Which is not the same as a regular credit card. Exactly. A secured credit card is designed to help boost your credit. So in other words, when you get this credit card, you're going to put like a $200 deposit down. You're going to pay up front before you make any purchases with that credit card. That way, if there's a missed payment, the credit card company already has your money. So again, their, their purpose is to build your credit. And thirdly, mm -hmm. And the third thing you can do to build your credit is to pay off your existing debts. Yes. Or at least pay it down. Or pay it down. Because what the lender is going to look at is something called a debt to income ratio. So the higher amount of debt that you have compared to your income will really affect that ratio and not give you as much buying power. You might not be able to afford as much home as you think because you qualify for a lower loan because you already have so much debt. Mm -hmm. So pay it down. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, uh, if you have your finances in order because you are awesome, then there are things you can do to still improve your credit. Like for example, you can request uh, a credit limit raise. Raise the roof. <laughs> Nobody says that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Increasing your credit limit will do, will, it will lower your utilization and therefore increase your score because that's something that the credit reporting bureaus look at. And that wraps the building credit part. Yeah. Yep. So remember, talk to your lender and if you don't have one, we've got a fairy's preferred lender list right here for you. Just click the link. <laughs> so number two, if you're trying to buy this year, is you're going to want to have a, a down payment savings plan. How are you going to get that down payment? So most people will think, well, you need 20%, right? So let's say you want to buy a $400,000 house. 20% of that is $80,000. That's a lot of money. Oh my. You might have that. Awesome. Great. But if you don't, don't be scared. Um, there are many down payment programs that you can put as little as 3.5% down, which would only be 14,000. A lot better than 80,000. <laughs> Way more attainable goal. So step one, when you're trying to come up with this plan of saving your down payment, you're going to want to make sure you know an exact dollar amount. So you have a, a real set goal, an obtainable goal that you're reaching for, not just some blank, oh, I have to raise a lot of money or save a lot of money. Right. So we stick with the $14,000. Let's say you already have $4,000 saved up. You need 10. So maybe try and save a thousand a month or whatever. And there's a lot of ways to, to work towards that goal. Um, first and probably the most obvious is to streamline your budget. We all know that we have some extras that we are paying for every week. For instance, maybe you go to Starbucks. Way too many. Times. Five times a week uh, or more. Guilty. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> That's something that you can at least trim back and that will start putting to your little pile, your, your down payment savings plan. Absolutely. Um, so you've cut the extras out of your budget. The next thing that you can do is you can build your income up. So whether that is asking for a raise or negotiating your salary at your job or even picking up a side hustle and getting that extra income somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned a side hustle today just being at Adriana's house learning that you can walk dogs and make money. <laughs> yep. Or go shovel snow. 
There's no snow. There's no snow in Georgia. But but wherever you live, that might be a side hustle for some of you. (laughs) Landscaping, affiliate marketing, um, print on demand t-shirts. There are so many side hustles out there. I have an idea, clean out the junk in your house and have a little sale on Facebook Marketplace. Absolutely, (laughs) sell your old clothes. Something I also need to do. (laughs) So on that note, when we're talking about income, lenders also consider alimony and child support as income. So you can add that to your math and uh, boost your income. Ding, ding. In the eyes of the lender. (laughs) I feel like that's a whole other episode, guys. That is a whole other episode. In the eyes of the lender. lender. Because it is important to understand how we perceive and what we think of things in terms of, for example, like Adriana said, income is very different from what a lender is going to see. Mm-hmm. For instance, you know, I had once had a client who um, owned a car or thought he owned a car. His dad bought the car for him. He made the payments on it himself, mm-hmm. but the dad made the admi- initial purchase. So the dad's name was on the title. So that was not his car. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. Yeah. understanding how a lender is going to perceive things and look at things and view things and count things is critical. Mm-hmm. Right, so talk to a lender. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the things that you can do to save? For example, I don't know, Christmas money, presents, end of the year stuff, just save it all. If you get monetary gifts from your family for birthdays or holidays, put that into your house fund. Resist the temptation to shop. (laughs) Resist the temptation to shop. Instant gratification is so tempting sometimes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. also we're coming up on tax season. If you're anticipating getting a big tax return, you can totally put that towards your down payment and make a large dent in that savings goal. It's gonna be a wonderful feeling when you finally get there and you have your new house. Yes. (laughs) So for our third and final tip today, you want to make sure you know your timeline. Because even once you have an accepted offer and you go under contract, it can still take on average around 30 days to get the keys to your new home. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that might affect your timeline are, for example, what if you have to relocate? Right? What if you're getting a new job and you're moving to a new area? You've got to consider the length of time that it takes to go through that real estate process of getting to know your areas, finding a home, and then even once you find it, getting under contract. And like Darcy just said, it can take 30 days, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less um, to actually get to that sold. And then once, once it's sold and the keys are in your hand, you still got to move in. So you want to be ready for that new job so you can start on your best foot. Absolutely. You also have to consider if you're a renter right now, when is your lease expiring? Mm -hmm. Most landlords require you to give 30 to 60 days of notice before you move out. So you need to have a plan in place and already be looking when you tell them you're going to move. And be careful with that too, because I don't want to get into another can of worms, but your lease might have something in there that you'd have to buy out of your lease if it's not actually coming up. But Either way, you have to give notice, but definitely read your lease. That's a great point. Yeah, know if your lease is expiring, know those lease terms on how to get out of it, especially when buying a home. So maybe things will come up that are unexpected, like maybe your family's growing, so you need to find a bigger place, or um, you got a new dog and you need a yard. Who knows? All of these things affect your timeline. And so what we like to say is that typically you should start the process three months at minimum before you need to move. Yep. Right. So whether you're looking to move tomorrow or December of 2022, either way, talk to your real estate agent because it's definitely a journey you want them um, on board with. And if you don't have an agent, you've got three lovely ladies right here you can call. In Georgia. Licensed in Georgia. (laughs) Yes, if you are looking for a home in Georgia, the real estate fairies have your back. (laughs) All right, guys, so to sum it up today, if you're ready to buy this year, make sure you remember, build your credit, have a savings plan for your down payment, and know your timeline. Here's to all your real estate goals in 2022. Cheers. Cheers.